Hi, welcome back to Behind the Bumpers. I'm Adam and we are here with 7457 Super Duper with their two uh, team members, Carter and Ezra, at the Indiana District State Championship. And this robot has proven to be very efficient at incredible autos and a quick trap mechanism that they're excited to show here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So Carter, you want to start off by kind of telling us the general path of the note, how you score? Absolutely. Yeah, so this is Mike, Michael D. Drop. Um, this is pretty much an everyman robot. You can do everything uh, possible in the game. That's really what we went into the season wanting to do. So yeah, I guess I'll just start with the intake. As you can tell, we have an under the bumper intake with mechanum wheels. Because the field just so open this year, we just really want our swerve to be able to drive as fast as we can nope, and just center it. Um, we also just added a camera so we can get those pesky notes that kind of like fall next to the amp where our driver wouldn't really be able to see them. Um, and then next, we'll go into our shooter indexer. This is one large sub-assembly. Uh, as you can tell, it does pivot on our three printed gears so we can get different shots. But once the note cycles through the intake, it will go right into our indexer where it will wait for a command from our drivers. Um, whether we want to score amp or we want to score speaker. Um, let's say, per se, we want to score speaker. They will press a single button and our shooter with help from the limelight will automatically adjust to the angle depending on where we are, how far away we are from the speaker, and it will fire. Um, if you want, Ezra is a programmer. Uh, he can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Can you tell us a little more? You told us about some graphs that help you line up your shot better and position the robot. Yeah, so we do have graphs, um, interval tree graphs. We use those to ensure that our shooter is always lined up to the speaker. It is on the click of one button, our drivetrain will snap to position and our shooter will go to the correct angle. The way we figured this out is by trial and error. Um, we start at one foot intervals every time, test different angles, go back another foot, test different angles, and we eventually all put those into a graph. Um, that graph interprets where it's going to be in between those points. And once we click that button, it changes degrees to rotation, sends that to our motor, and it'll snap to position. Um, if Carter wants to talk more about the sub-assemblies. Yeah. Uh, so just kind of taking back to just how no would travel through our robot during a game. Like I said, once we get to the, uh, the shooter part, it'll either it'll shoot, or if the um, drive team wants to press a different button, they can press a button for our amp. As you can kind of notice, I'm saying one button because this is by far the most complicated robot we've ever built, and we just wanted it to simplify it for the driver. Um, they will press a button. It will not only move our, our shooter into the correct angle, it'll also move our elevator up to the correct position. It will feed the note up into here where it will hit a break, and it will stop, and then we'll be ready for it to score an amp. Uh, similarly, with our trap, uh, it will do the same thing. Once we climb, this will our shooter will go up the same angle, feed it to the elevator, or and the elevator amp. The uh, amp will then not only hold onto it, it will actually back it up just a little bit, so it's out of the way of the wall when we climb. And then once we climb, it raises up and scores and it sits there. Uh, another major thing I want to point out on our amp is the way it scores. It's it, it doesn't only score, it slam dunks it. That's something we want to ensure. We don't want to leave anything up to chance. So by having a downwards angle on it, we really just shove the note in, making sure it goes in and we score. Um, let's go with some coding on that. I don't know anything about it. Um, a huge part of having a robot this complicated is the code ensuring it does not damage itself. There are a lot of interlocking parts and those can go very wrong very quickly. So we have put graphs and soft limits on this robot to ensure that doesn't happen. One of our main graphs is the elevator height to shooter angle. If we did not have that, there would be interferences. Let's say we raise the shooter angle up to here, or it's in break mode, um, then it won't be able to reach the amp. Or if we raise the elevator too high, it'll hit the low bar. 
So you have to make sure that every single time the shooter is shooting directly through the gap between the top of the elevator and the low bar. Um, we have a graph that does that. That is another trial and error thing, but it's been working really well. If Carter wants to talk more about the elevator. Uh, yeah, this is, shout out ThriftyBot, by the way. Uh, this is a standard ThriftyBot elevator. It, it just kind of worked. It was simple. And for such a complicated robot, we wanted something that would be easy to fix if we got in a pinch. Uh, there's minimal uh, changes to it other than our amp acts as the top support. And kind of what, going off what Ezra said, our bottom beam is changed to be vertical instead of horizontal. Because once we built it, we figured out, uh, we didn't catch it in CAD that it interfered with a few of our, our lower angles. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for the shooter. It's pretty simple. It's uh, this top and bottom wheels. It's a, a half inch compression, I want to say. Uh, and it's cantilevered, so we have different RPMs running on different motors. Um, I guess the last major sub-assembly we can talk about is the arm. This is on the outside of a robot. Very simple. Uh, uh, it's it's just two, it's it's four hooks. We have uh, uh, two separate, uh, we have a quick hook and a slow hook. The slow hook is necessary for when we want to trap, which is mainly during falls. Then we also have a quick hook, which in the past we mainly used for the eliminations because we wanted to run as many note cycles as possible, but we might change it up this game, or uh, this comp. Uh, and just kind of banking off what Ezra said, there, there's a few different limits in this. We have soft limits on our elevator. We have uh, we have brakes right here, and then we also have a hard stop with our tensioners because this is heavily geared, and if something goes wrong, it will rip our robot. So, yeah, if Ezra wants to talk about that. Um, autos are a huge thing about what sets our robot apart. We have a fast drive train, uh, L32 Krakens, so we tend to want to go for the middle notes because even if we don't end up scoring the middle notes, we still shoot them onto our side. That's really nice. We have a four note auto, uh, one on source side, one on amp side. Um, they get there really fast and it's very consistent when it comes to shooting. Nice. And then um, if we could, can we walk through a few, like uh, pass to the note, things like that, yeah. the, yeah. uh, the trap automation? Right Is it on? So as you can see, it goes under the bumper. Stops with the brake beam. Shooter angle can change. And all with the press of a button, it does all that. Well, thank you. Once again, this is 7457 Super Duper. And uh, good luck at this competition and good luck at your future competitions. Thank you. Shout out Colors Inc. and Thrifty Bot too. Big fans. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.